um, to, in order to use uh, net bias notation, which is basically using backslash, backslash, uh, instead of something like HTTP colon or FTP colon. This was uh, also one of the more recent things. It's, uh, it's one of those things, you know, that one could argue, you know, it might be a design problem, not necessarily a bug. Um, it was kind of like um, we released it a few days ago, and Abid Raf uh, gave some very good feedback because apparently it turns out that uh, Google, different domains within Google, or should I say subdomains, like uh, say maps.google.com, uh, images.google.com, um, it turns out that you can swap the, the subdomains and it will still show the same application. So say that you have a Google Images search results, right? You, you will have images.google.com, right? But you can change it to mail. Uh, Google will happily take both. Now, you, mu you might be thinking, well, who cares? You, know, you can change the subdomain. There's, there's two implications to this. First of all, if you find the cross-domain vulnerability like a cross scripting on only one of the applications, you'll be able to affect uh, a different application. So say that you find the cursor scripting in images.google.com, you now might be able to target mail.google.com in order to target Gmail. Um, and it also allows you to gain more trust from the user. Uh, in this case, um, by tampering the images URL of an images result file, uh, you can change, well, you can change the login page. This is a screenshot on the next page. I'll show it now. But from, from this uh, URL, all you have to know basically is the entire URL was originally a uh, Google Images URL, right? So say that you go to Google uh, Images, right? You search for something, the URL will slightly look like that because the different applications are being shared among different uh, subdomains. You can change the subdomain from images to mail. Remember that what we're trying to do here is uh, do a phishing attack against uh, Gmail. This is the, the whole point. If you look at all these uh, weird characters, right, this is actually the URL where the image would come from. Uh, it's just hex encoding. It's nothing fancy. You can convert any URL to hex encoding using any online uh, tool. Uh, there's a lot of tools that can help you with that. Uh, so this scrambled uh, URL is actually a web page hosted on googlepages.com which is uh, really a completely fake login page. Now, it's not the most perfect phishing attack, but it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's a few things that make it uh, likely to succeed. Uh, perhaps the screenshot is not really, you know, the resolution is not the best. But, you know, what we have is uh, we have a fake login page, right? That's on the, on the bottom of the page. You can see it's under the, the border. Uh, and if you look at the URL, it, it says mail.google.com. So the idea is that, you know, by using the same domain as Gmail, uh, you gain more trust uh, from the user. Of course, because the login page that you're inserting through the frame on the bottom part of the page is actually completely fake. It's somewhere else. That means that the username and the password will travel somewhere else. Someone could argue it's a vulnerability. Somebody else will say it's, uh, it's just a feature. But the, the point here is not to get into semantics. It's really to discuss how, uh, you know, different features can be abused uh, for malicious uh, purposes. Uh, and this still works because it's actually the way Google Images works, you know. And uh, the domain sharing issue is still, is still possible. It's still there. As you can see, you know, it's a, I made a quite a, you know, small presentation. Uh, uh, mainly because it's the end of the day, it's the second day, and uh, you know I know probably you guys are ready to party, have a few pints, I don't know whatever it is, you know. So I try to make it uh, as uh, painless uh, as possible. Um, I'm not sure if you have any other questions uh, or energy to to ask a question, but you know don't be scared. Uh, I don't expect you to have understood anything of what I said. So you can ask me again. It's not a problem. Don't, don't be shy. Or maybe you have some ideas to research. Uh, please, if anyone has a question, um, just go ahead. I'm sure there's something. I mean, if you're into client-side security, maybe you've been researching something, maybe a Firefox uh, extension. I don't know. Um, it must be something you've been playing with. Uh, no reaction, no feedback. 
All right. Well, should I maybe so play some music, man? Let's let's I dance. actually let's do I have a question for you. Oh, there's a question. Where, where's that coming from? Oh, there right you here. are. Sorry. Hi. So so I work on a browser. What can I do to make your life more difficult as an attacker? To make the life more difficult. Yes. As an attacker. Yes. So, sorry, the, uh, you're saying how can you make the attacker's life more difficult, right? What what can I do in the next version of my browser to make your life harder? Well, your life harder, well, first of all, you want to audit the, the source code as, as much as possible, right? And right. also, perhaps, you want to uh, allow, you know, you want to minimize any, any sort of compromise. So, perhaps, you know, I mean, Google had an interesting approach that we're uh, separating different tabs within different processes, you know? I mean, it's not a holy grail solution, but you can see how Google is trying to, you know, come up with uh, creative uh, implementations that will minimize a uh, possible uh, compromise, you know? Uh, perhaps, you know, a bit, it's not really feasible, right, uh, perhaps, but I personally would like to have, say, in the world of Firefox, right, I like to be able to, you know, to know whether or not the, the extensions are legitimate or they contain uh, malicious code. Unfortunately, when you go to the uh, extensions repository, you're just hoping that <laughs> the extensions don't contain any malicious codes, you know. Um, in the case of uh, plugins, you know, like QuickTime, it's quite obvious that they need to improve, you know, Apple needs to improve the quality assurance uh, process. I mean, there's, there's really, you know, there will always be a vulnerability somewhere, but you can see how, I mean, QuickTime is getting owned all the time. Everyone is finding vulnerabilities all, all the time. So something tells you that not, they're doing something wrong, you know? Maybe they need to hire 10 security researchers to, uh, fully focused on QuickTime so they can work with the developers, you know? I don't know, I, probably I didn't answer your question. No, no, I mean, better, better code quality is always good. But there's yeah, no, like, security feature you have that, man, if everybody exactly. did this, that would be the end of me. I, I like using NoScript as well, but I realize that NoScript is uh, it's for technical users, in my opinion. I mean, some people don't agree with that statement, but I don't picture my mom using NoScript. Adrian, this is not working. What am I doing wrong? Oh, you have to whitelist that domain. But that's not the same domain as the one in the address bar. No, mom, this website is pulling content from like 20 different domains, and that's one of them. You need that for the flash to be displayed. I mean, no, it's not going to work. But for, you know, computer geeks like us, no script is really good, I think. I, I like it personally, but cool. there's not a, it's not a mainstream solution, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion, I mean. Thanks. <laughs> OK. Is there any, any other questions? Uh, any any free beer you might have with you? Chilled, if possible? No? Wow, everyone is really, really tired at this time of the day. I don't blame you. I slept uh, one hour last night. Uh, I just arrived today in the morning, and I had to give two presentations. Right now, I don't even know where I am. This is like a dream to me right now. I don't even know if this is happening. You know? It's like a hologram. Anyways, well, thank you very much for your time and showing up. Well, thank you very much, Adrian. Much appreciated. And do let PDP know we miss him. And he's going to buy us a keg of free beer, seeing that he 